Welcome back everyone. So now section 6 deals with differential equations except the right hand side, the forcing function, is going to be discontinuous. And so just to jump right in, we're basically going to be dealing with IVPs of the form a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y is equal to some g of t and then initial conditions at 0. So y of 0 is going to equal to something y0. Again y0 is just a number and then y prime of 0 is going to equal some number y1. Um, as always, a, b, c, y, 0, and y, 1 are all real numbers. And now, what's different is, again, g of t is going to be discontinuous. So just kind of think piecewise, which should be um, triggering in your head that we're going to have to use unit step functions, right, to model this. Um, and so, let's just go ahead and get started. So I've posed this IVP here, and we're just going to solve it. It's y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y is equal to f of t, where f of t is defined as it's 1 between 0 and 10, and then 0 um, from 10 until forever, right? And then it has homogeneous uh, initial conditions, so both at 0 at the function and its derivative is equal to 0. So that simplifies our lives a little bit. And so the process is the same as always. Um, you're just going to want to find, again, Laplace of y double prime. I don't know why they keep connecting. But anyway, y double prime. Um, remember, we've done this before. This is just going to be s squared big Y of s. And then remember, it's minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0. So that's really just going to be minus 0 minus 0, right, because of our initial conditions. So that's fine, we're just really left with this. By similar argument, our y prime is just going to be s, y, s. And I should put a 3 here to indicate that it's going to be 3s, big y, s. And again, it's going to be minus 0. And then 2 Laplace of y is just 2 big y, s. Cool. Now, the right-hand side, we need to find a way to write this in unit steps. Um, this one's pretty easy, right? It's between 0 and 10 is 1. So that sounds to me like we're just indicating the function 1 from 0 to 10. And because 1 times anything it's, uh, is that thing, we can just simply rewrite this as u0 of t minus u10 of t. And this is where I, um, I haven't mentioned this yet to you, but this is important. Think about in the eyes of the Laplace transform, like what the integral sees. u0 of t is nothing more than just 1, right? Because of the, the integral is just from 0 to infinity, we don't care if it's u negative 1 of t or u negative 5 of t. For our purposes, u0 of t is the exact same thing as just 1. So, really, we can rewrite this as 1 minus u10 of t. And that's a good check for you to for you to go ahead and do. If you take the Laplace transform of u0 of t, you will get the Laplace transform of what uh, taking the Laplace of 1 is, which should be, you know, further evidence that they really are the same in the eyes of Laplace. And so, if we take the Laplace of this, then Laplace of 1, again, is just 1 over s. And then Laplace of u10t is going to be, we have the minus, and then e to the minus 10 s over s. Cool. So we've taken Laplace of everything and add in our initial conditions. So now we're left with the following formula. We're left with s squared plus 3s plus 2 times big Y s is equal to the Laplace of u0 minus u10, which is the same as 1 minus u10, which is 1 over s minus e to the minus 10 s over s. And then we want to get just y of s by itself, right? So then this is y of s is equal to 1 over this. Now, this factored is s plus 2, s plus 1, right? So let's go ahead and put that in. And it's times all of this, which we can also go ahead and, well, I'll save it to the next step, but basically you can take out another 1 over s, right, here, and this becomes 1 minus e to the minus 10 over s, or minus 10 times s. So really, it's 
1 over s, s plus 2, s plus 1, times quantity 1 minus e to the minus 10 s. And we have to take the inverse of the loss of that. So, um, I want to make this very clear. It, this thing is screaming at you to take partial fractions, right? I hope you can see that. But you may be wondering, okay, how do we deal with the e to the minus 10s? Here's my advice. Ignore this for now. Just ignore it. Worry about it until the very end. Okay? Focus on this part. Take partial fractions of this. We can deal with the rest later. Okay? So, if we take partial fractions of this, we can set this up as 1 over s, s plus 2, and then s plus 1, and that's equal to a over s plus 2 plus b over s plus 1 plus c over s, and then if we want to multiply through by the denominator on the left hand side, then this will come to be 1 is equal to a times everything besides the s plus 2, so s plus 1 times s, and then plus b, everything but the s plus 1, so that's s plus 2 times s, and then plus c, everything but the s, so s plus 2, s plus 1. Cool. Now you're in, this, you're in the special case where you can just let s be uh, particular values to make certain constants go away, and so that's fine, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say let s equals 0. If we let s equal 0, then the left hand side is still 1. a goes away and b goes away. The one that doesn't go away is c, and then this becomes c times 2 times 1, right? Therefore, c has to equal 1 half, right? So we solve for our first constant. We do the same thing. We let s equal, let's see which one do we want to do. Let's choose minus 1 let s equal minus 1. So the left hand side is still 1. a goes away, c goes away. What doesn't go away is b. And so minus 1 plus 2 is going to be 1 times minus 1 is going to be uh, just a minus 1. Therefore b is going to be minus 1. And then finally we let s equal 2 minus 2, and then all we have left is the a constant, so we know that one is going to stay, and then um, hopefully you've written it down. What happens is minus 2 plus 1, so minus 1, times uh, s by itself, so minus 2. Therefore this goes to 2, which also implies that a is equal to 1 half. Awesome. Okay. So what this means is that 1 over s plus 2, s minus 1, s. All of that times, now we can bring this back, 1 minus e to the minus 10 s. All of this is now equal to quantity 1 minus e to the minus 10 s. So we, we've left that alone, which is good. And then we put in our constants from our partial uh, fraction decomposition. So 1 half s plus 2 plus minus 1 s plus 1 plus 1 half s. Cool. Okay. Now, this can be broken up so that you can take the Laplace of it a lot easier. Let's focus on when this number 1 is multiplied onto these two terms. That seems fair, right? So what that is going to yield is 1 half over s plus 2 plus minus 1 s plus 1 plus 1 half s. Okay. And then I won't forget about the other part for now. Or I won't forget about it right now just so that I show you what we're about to do. So, and then the other part is just this the e to the minus 10s contribution, which is going to be the exact same thing in here. So plus minus 1 s plus 1 plus 1 half s. Okay, so 
the left hand side. These are pretty easy inverse Laplaces, right? They're all going to be exponentials and uh, it looks like a, a constant, right? So for this one, we take inverse Laplace. This is going to be 1 half e minus 2t based on our table, right? This one is going to yield minus, because of the minus 1, e minus t, right? And then this one is going to yield plus one half, 1 half. So good, we're halfway done. Now, notice something. The right, like this part right here, is the exact same, except now it's tacked on with a e to the minus 10s. So if you remember from last video, right, last video I believe, when we were dealing with unit steps, the how to take the inverse Laplace of this is that if we have an e to the minus cs, uh, whatever attached to it, what you do now is you take the inverse Laplace of this, except you shift it by that C, so T minus C, and then you attach a unit step that starts there. And so we've already done that first step. We already know what these inverse Laplaces are going to look like because they're right there. So it becomes 1 half E to the minus 2. Now our quantity has to be T minus 10 because of that E to the minus 10 S. Okay, that's just the main distinction here. And then Similarly, e minus e to the minus t minus 10. And then it's going to be a plus 1 half. And that doesn't need any shift because that function um, is 1 half. It's a constant function anyways. And then you multiply it by u10 of t. And this is the solution to your IVP. So it just comes down to remembering don't worry about the e to the minus cs that you'll encounter from doing discontinuity. Discontinuous functions, you're going to have to deal with them at the very end, but as you can see here, they're not too bad. It's just a matter of remembering to add the shift in time and then multiply on a unit step. And so, great. Um, so yeah, practice the problems in this section, um, but overall, as you can see, it's just building upon what we already know. So cool. Uh, uh, Next section, we're going to talk about impulse functions, and then the section after that, we'll be talking about convolution. And then that's it. So, great, see you then.